Welcome to the Art Lady channel. Today in class, I'm gonna demonstrate how we do a walk around paint. And for a walk around paint, what we do is we push in all of our chairs and I have paint colors that I leave out for weeks and sometimes months at a time, just refreshing the paint. But this is an easy way for me to paint. I put paint colors out on the tables. Usually the paint colors are with the color family. For example, here, I have different values of pinks and reds, um, but at each of the tables, there's different values and colors, and the kids just walk up to the colors that they like to use. Once they're at the colors, they put their paper right in front, for example, here. So if I wanna use this pink color, my paper is directly in front of the color that I want to use. My body is in front of the color as well. So that's how we would paint. We bring our paper to the color and then we'll get started on painting. So let me show you how I want you to properly use that paintbrush. Let me put this down and then I'll demonstrate. Your paper, remember, has to be next to the color. If you can't reach the color, then there's too many kids. If your paper can't be near the color, there's too many kids at the table, so just go to another color until that space is free. Now, we're gonna be using different kinds of brushes. So depending on what you use, you need to choose, or what you wanna do, you need to make the good choice of what kind of brush to use. If I need really, really tiny little lines or dots, I want to use the smallest brush, right? If I'm painting big areas, I would take a big wide flat brush. Each brush that I have does different jobs. These are just two of the examples. When I actually hold my paintbrush, we hold the brush with our fingers directly above the metal part here. This is the round metal part and the hairs are inside this tube. And then in the flat brush, the metal is clamped here. So my fingers should be just like I hold a pencil, directly above the metal. And when I actually paint, my brush should be facing what? The tip of the brush should be upright and straight, facing the ceiling. Facing the ceiling. This actually would form a right angle. If you were to measure the angle where the brush hairs hit the page, a right angle with the paper. That way, as I move my brush, the hairs drag behind and make beautiful lines. Let me show you. We dip into the paint gently. Now, I always tell the kids, dip in like you're gonna do a kiss. When you're gonna kiss, say you're gonna kiss someone's cheek. This is the cheek. Here's your cheek. Say this finger's your lips. When you're gonna kiss somebody, you don't go <laughs> You learn as a baby, Oh no, I can't go fast when I kiss somebody. Because if I do, I'm gonna smash my lips and it's gonna hurt, ouch. One and two year old babies learn that very quickly. I remember my son when he kissed me, ouch, it would hurt. It didn't take him very long. So when you go into the paint, go in soft and gentle, like a little kiss. Go in soft and careful. You don't wanna go whoosh, like you're diving into the swimming pool. Soft and gentle, and just go a little bit. Look at that. You do not need to get it all wet. The metal doesn't need to get wet at all. The metal never touches the paper. And what happens if you did get this all wet is the paint ends up getting up and into this tube and that's not good for the brush. It's hard to wash out and then it makes the hairs end up spreading out and we don't want that. So in order to keep the brushes beautiful, we do a gentle kiss and then touch the edge if it's really drippy. Gentle kiss to the dish. Now you're ready to paint, holding your brush properly, your fingers just like you hold a pencil, straight up in the air, and you can draw with this brush. Let the hairs, now I'm gonna tip down so you can see, let the hairs drag behind. See how slowly I did that? Turn it over. If you need to make another line or you wanna continue this line, let the hairs drag behind and you can continue your shape. When you run out of paint, by pressing and squishing, it doesn't make more paint. You have to go back into the paint again. 
do the process all over again. The gentle kiss, slowly, carefully, and then you're ready to paint again. So continue drawing your shape. Say I wanna make, I'll just do this shape here. Continue. Now I wanna fill this in with color. Now in my classroom, in a, if there's two colors inside the dish and they're the same color family, pink, this is my magenta, this is my light pink. To make this tint of color, I added white. This is in the same family as this, it's part of this. So I don't have to wash my brush if I wanna go into this color, and neither do you. If it's the same family, the rule is you don't need to wash. So I'm just gonna fill it in with some lighter value just to make my painting more interesting. And when you fill it in, you wanna think about when you pet an animal. If you're petting a kitten or a dog or a puppy, you go in one direction and gently go back and continue, just like you're petting carefully and gently. I turn my brush over and pet. If I have thick areas or puddles, you wanna smooth those out and smooth up your whole shape. Go carefully and slow around your edges, if you have any edges that need to be clean and neat. And that's how we paint. Now I wanna to go to a new color. For the new color, I don't wanna use the same family, so I'm gonna wash my brush. So I'm gonna show you how I wash my brush. I'm going to take my brush and I'm gonna bring this over to the sink area. And I'm gonna walk. Now when I'm walking, first of all, I'll leave my paper at the table or I'll bring my paper to um, uh, the, the next color I wanna use. When I walk, I hold my brush like this down carefully because I don't wanna run into some kids. If there's other kids at the sink, I want to be careful of the other kids, right? Yes. I don't want to reach my hand in between kids. That's going to get paint on them. So I come over to my sink, and you can see this has been used. I can refresh this water. Now, I come over to the sink, and then I move my hand up to the tip of the brush. I dip my brush in, and I'm going to stir it vigorously. If I just do it gently, it's nothing's gonna happen. I need to bring it in and listen for the noise. That is vigorous. Now don't do it so crazy that you're breaking the handles because a lot of these are wooden. Bring it down vigorously. If you still see some paint on it here, you can continue until the paint's gone. And then we dry our brush on the paper towel. To dry the brush, you draw, turn it over, and draw again, and then you're ready to go to the new color. You move your body carefully with your paper and go to the next color. And you can see how the tables are down here. You can see that there's not a lot of paint on the tables because when the kids are done and your picture's on the dry rack, what you can do is go around and if there's a little bit of paint on this table, that's your job. You go ahead and wipe it off for the next kids. Damp towel, wipe it off. That's at the end of class for kids that finish early. And that's how I do the walk around paint. And I leave these paints out overnight. In the morning, I mean at night, if this is kind of dry, I'll just float a little water on top. And in the morning, I'll give the paints a stir, and we're good to go the next day. And I, do, and I just continue refilling this, and that's how we do the real easy walk-around paint.